This video is to demonstrate accepted routine husbandry practices in camelids. If you cannot perform these procedures safely or humanely on your own animals, or you are concerned about performing these procedures correctly and without injury to your animals or yourself, we recommend that you consult a veterinarian for assistance. In the United States, it is unlawful to offer professional veterinary services without a license. Generally, the state's Veterinary Medical Licensing Board enforces the state's code regarding the practice of veterinary medicine. Questions about this should be directed to your own state's licensing board or your veterinarian. Today we're going to talk about the removal of fighting teeth in llamas and alpacas. Um, we are going to discuss first the reason that we tend to want to do these. These teeth uh, appear on the upper and lower part of the jaw and they can become extremely hooked and sharp. Um, they occlude um, against each other and they can provide a source of injury to other males in the herd primarily. Um, with aggressive behavior we tend to see some fighting between those, hence the name fighting teeth and they can also potentially be uh, problematic if they are animals that are not happy with being handled. They can be used as a weapon in that kind of a situation as well. Usually the first time that we think about addressing fighting teeth and trying to remove them for, for safety issues is about the age of 18 months to a little over two years of age. They do eventually need to be um, kind of filed back or removed again at some point. And that varies a little bit from animal to animal, but usually it's about once every year to two years that we think about um, reevaluating that. Certainly it may need to be done sooner in some cases. So the equipment that we typically use to perform this in the standing animal that is not sedated and what is very easily done at home by owners is the method that uses giggly wire or obstetrical wire that can be uh, readily purchased at most farm supply. Uh, type businesses and then the handles that go along with them which open up and allow you to actually clasp this abrasive wire and provide a safe surface for um, handling the wire when you're actually trying to put pressure on the tooth to remove it. So you'll have one handle in one hand, the other handle in the other and then the surface in between, which can be adjusted um, very easily by moving the handles, goes back behind the tooth and provides the cutting surface on the inside of this loop. The other potential option that you have for removing fighting teeth involves the use of a Dremel type machine. And this is something that's probably best performed if you have the animal sedated because of the potential for cutting the mouth if you're using it in an animal that can move very easily. We typically perform this with a uh, kind of a circular cutting wheel as opposed to just sanding it down with something that's more of an abrasive surface, uh, kind of like sandpaper, although both techniques can be performed depending on how much tooth you need to remove. So today we have Macchiato and he's going to be our assistant to demonstrate the removal of fighting teeth. Um, much like Macchiato, most of the time when we think about removing fighting teeth, it's in males. However, females do occasionally get teeth of a size and curvature that necessitate removing them. So that can be something you may be faced with at some point. We're going to perform this procedure in a standing animal that's not overly restrained. But if you do have a chute that's available to you, that can be very helpful to help from preventing them moving side to side and also give you a little bit more control of the head for performing this procedure. And the other thing is that some animals may be just robust enough and fractious enough that you may have to sedate them to do this even with the giggly wire um, and the handles. So that may be something that your veterinarian may have to assist you with if you need sedation. The first thing that we're going to show you right now is kind of the appearance of the teeth. And we're going to try to get a, a shot here with him opening his lip and pulling it back. And you can see here that the first incisor and then he has a canine on the top. Those are the two common teeth that we will see for fighting teeth on the top part of the jaw. And then on the lower part, his canine tooth is coming up. And they'll have the same set of teeth on the opposite side of the mouth. So you can have three teeth that you may have to remove on each side of the jaw. For our purposes in trying to remove the fighting teeth, one thing that's really important is having somebody who can restrain the animal appropriately for you. And it is also helpful if they can maintain the control of the head and also pull that lip back so that while you're cutting with the giggly wire, you don't have as much risk of lacerating the, the inside of the cheek. So we will attempt to place our previously uh, put together handles and loop of giggly wire around the tooth and then we'll show you how to remove them. 
So now that we have our teeth exposed, what we're going to do is place our wire back behind the hook of this tooth and keeping a little bit of tension just to hold it in place. We're going to go up close to as proximal as we can on the tooth or as close to the gum line as possible. And then we're going to use steady, even pressure back and forth. And eventually the tooth will just kind of pop out like that. Then at that point you can move on to the next tooth. Again, we'll slip it back behind the curve of it, close to the gum line, and then provide even pressure using long, even strokes, and eventually that tooth also will pop. Sometimes you'll have a little residual attachment, but usually you've got enough of it that you can easily pluck that piece out. And then the last one that we'll do is on the bottom jaw. A lot of times the animal will actually resist and pull back, and that's okay, it actually makes your job a little bit easier. You can see that these are all down. We do have just a little bit of bleeding at the gum line. That's not uncommon, and it, this small amount will resolve on its own over the next couple minutes. After you've removed all of the fighting teeth on this side of the mouth, you use the same procedure to remove the teeth on the opposite side. Again, you may have one or two or potentially all three on each side for a total of six teeth that need to be removed.